Many people are still not familiar with the difference between the Cisco Catalyst and Cisco Nexus switches. The Cisco Catalyst model is mainly for enterprise like offices where voice, video technologies and wireless networks are very common. Cisco Nexus switches are for data center where IP phones and wireless devices are very rare and features like power over ethernet and wireless integration are not available. In this video, we're gonna talk about the top features of Cisco Nexus switches. And by the way, have you already voted? Please go to the community page and vote for your preferred Cisco technology. And I will deliver free training for those who are new to this channel. Welcome. I am your host. Name is Dean Armada. And I am your cloud and data center. And on this channel, we talk about tech careers and certifications, trivia and tutorials in cybersecurity, trivia and tutorials in cloud and data center, and my journey as an IT instructor. So feel free to check out the rest of the channel and consider subscribing. We have Fabric Extender or FEX. I'm gonna explain this easily. Looking at the diagram, we have 10 servers and each servers have two one gig NIC or network interface card. Now, you are required to connect all servers to the Nexus 5000 switch, but we don't have enough ports. What will you do now? Purchase a Nexus switch? That will be expensive, you know, or buy a cheap switch but it will not be able to use the capability of your parent data center switch. The simple solution is to add fabric extender or FEX switch. Well, FEX switch is a dumb terminal. It doesn't have a control plane nor management plane, but both planes will be processed by the parent switch. But how? Well, FEX switches are discovered by the parent switch upon correct port configuration then the FEX interface will be added as part of the parent switch. There are many advantages of provisioning FEX, aside from it's less expensive than the traditional data center switches. It can also simplify the management, as FEXs would be part and all managed by the parent switch. In this case, it's Nexus 5000. This is how STP operates and we need to block ports in order to prevent loops. And by preventing loops, we have now a more effective host-to-host -host communications in a redundant network topology without any issues. But would it be better if we don't block ports? We will keep the redundant links, but this time we will also add redundant devices. Now, let's add more redundancy. Why? Because it's a good idea since all links will be used anyway. From the two servers, we will also add redundant links towards to the upstream switch. We will also have redundant links per switch pair. Now, it's better. We are ready to enable VPC or virtual port channel. VPC, the concept is very simple, and that is to maintain active active paths in a redundant layer two topology. We simply avoid spanning three block ports by having an active active redundant switch pair. By having these, the servers or the downstream devices will be able to send traffic simultaneously to the upstream switches. And it uses VPC peer links to exchange layer 2 information between two Nexus switches. Because this pair, the two Nexus switches, will act as a single logical device. VXLAN and eVPN. This can be a really long discussion, but I will make it short and simple. Okay, so VXLAN. This allows us to extend layer 2 networks in between layer 3 boundaries so that the virtual machines can be deployed and moved on any server location regardless of the subnet or VLAN the physical server is residing. It's standardized as IETF RFC 7348. 
and it's the recommended protocol for spine and leaf architecture, especially in a very large and complex data center network environment. VXLAN is an overlay network technology with Mac over IP and layer two tunneling capabilities. It can scale up to 16 million plus logical segments. This is well beyond the standard 4,000 plus VLANs. VXLAN also replaces OTV and Fabric Path. These are all Cisco proprietary Nexus features available in Nexus 7K and 5K. We can also use eVPN to enable VXLAN routing. It also tracks information of all connected endpoints in real time. It also used to scale to multiple data center sites and optimize data center routing as well. eVPN is a very advanced topic and we can discuss this in another video. Next, Fiber Channel or FC and Fiber Channel over Ethernet or FCOE interfaces. Now, this is something special because Nexus switches are the only switches in the world that can process Ethernet, FC, and FCOE traffic. It varies depends on the model though. For example, the Nexus 7000 only supports FCOE and the Nexus 5000 can do most if not all storage switch capabilities. And the Nexus 9000 can do storage switching only in NPV mode. But the point is, Nexus platforms are designed for storage due to its storage switching capabilities. It can do zoning, it can discover storage array as the target, and discover servers as initiators. Next, Linux tools, programmability, and automation features. From the Nexus Switch CLI, you can access the bash and use Linux native tools. You can manipulate files, run scripts, run applications, create slash manage containers, and many more. Nexus switches also have a built-in automation features, such as power on auto provisioning. And this allows us to automatically provision not just one, but multiple devices. So you don't need to access the switch via console and do manual device config provisioning. You can also enable NX API. This is a REST based API of Nexus switches with a minimal Cisco proprietary features. This is the core programmability and automation feature available in most, if not all, Nexus switches. NX API. This also allows you to easily gather bulk switch information and status in an application level. An NX API also allows you to push Configuration with supported encoding methods such as JSON, XML, using Python scripts. We talked about Cisco Nexus switches in general, 2K, 5K, 7K, and 9K models. Cisco Nexus 9000 switch model is more special because this is the only Nexus switch model where we can enable application-centric infrastructure or ACI. And we will talk about it in another video.